Wittgenstein developed the notion of family resemblance, which appalled the logicians and the mathematicians of his time, particularly Bertrand Russell, who found that new mode of philosophy intolerable and unsustainable. Life doesn't have that propositional, factual exactitude that he had propounded in the Tractatus, but is a whirlwind, if you like, to put it like that, of change um, where there is no such mathematical exactitude. There is constant dissimilarity between one moment and the next. And this was revealed by, for example, Straffa's Italian gesticulation and others in Cambridge became much more significant in terms of singular meaning than the simple pictorial exactitude that he presumed existed between proposition and the fact. He would ask a question like, and he was a very powerful uh, lecturer. My particular uh, lecturer, Cameron Jackson, was a PhD student of his, would talk about the incomparable, um, the incomparable determination that Wittgenstein had to get to the bottom of things. And he would be very uh, uh, powerfully uh, enigmatic and at the same time emotional in his lectures. When he was on the lecture stand and he was talking, he would say things like, when he came to the end of, the, of his idea, um, he would say, please help me out here. Will somebody help me out? And Jackson, my professor, said to me, uh, he was so powerful that everybody was so intimidated that uh, they were terrified to do so. But the notion I was getting back to is, for example, he would say, well, what is, what is a game, for example? We talk about language games and games in life and so on. What is it? Okay, it is something to do with the rules. Let's say football, rules, there are rules there, there are regulations uh, that you can't break. But is, is football the same kind of game as, for example, the card game solo, which you pay, uh, play by yourself? There are rules there, but the usual concepts, for example, of winning and losing and so on, are not applicable to every game that's played. Which is to say that there is a family resemblance, all right? There is something happening there, but the rules that he was talking about are not strictly laid down, for example, in formulaic fashion. No, they change. And games change, and games are reinvented and invented. And he was more or less saying something that the meaning of life is more like that than the kind of mathematical, logical precision that he spoke about previously. And it, it was a movement, it was a tide, and there was no particular determination uh, that could be made of it. It, it was sliding. Even Paul Simon, the pop star, wrote a song called Slip Sliding Away. And that's how Wittgenstein uh, thought of life, thought of meaning, that things were slipping away all the time and reinventing themselves, coming back into existence. He was trying to express an ocean that life is not something static, uh, even though he was, as I said, a logician, mathematician, engineer himself. Life is not static. 
it's moving all the time. A lot of people fell out with him because of that, particularly Bertrand Russell, who thought that that was nonsense, that his earlier stuff from the Tractatus was much more significant, powerful, realistic, uh, than the later questions that he was asking in his, uh, his time in Cambridge. Now, he wasn't, a, as I said, he wasn't an academic in the usual sense, that he went to halls, that he went to colleges, and that he performed in the way that he did. He preferred to escape, and he did, to, uh, to Norway, for example, where he had his hut, and to Ireland, for example, the west of Ireland. He went to the most remote places that he could find to escape the academic atmosphere. Uh, which he felt was foul. He didn't want it. He didn't need the money, he didn't do anything, um, except go to these remote places. He worked and worried immensely and ascetically, which is to say completely alone. Um, it was, of course, well known that he was vaguely homosexual. He had a boyfriend who was a mathematician, that he sent, for example, out of the university and said, go and find a factory job. He tried to get into Russia himself to work as a factory person. They wouldn't let him because he was so world famous. And they said, no, Professor Wittgenstein, you cannot come here. Uh, you must, if you want to come to Russia, you will have to be an academic. He went to Ireland where he, he was finally diagnosed as having cancer of the prostate and he returned to Cambridge. And on his deathbed he said, it's been a marvelous life. <laughs>